Here are 50 insane facts about pain that will make you cringe and want to curl up in the fetal position. Number 50. Your extremities are the most sensitive to pain compared to the rest of your body. These places are your fingertips, forehead, shins, the arch of your foot, and your knees. Number 49. This is why it hurts so much when you step on a Lego brick. You have 200,000 sensory receptors in your feet, and most of them get fired up when you make that fateful step. These receptors tell you so much information about how you're walking, standing, or how hot and cold the floor is. Number 48. There are some people in the world who don't feel any pain. They suffer from something called congenital analgesia. Number 47. Pain might actually shrink the brain, the chronic kind anyway. One study showed that people's brains with chronic backache were 11% smaller on average than the general populations. Number 46. If you think you feel more pain than the average person, you might not be 100% wrong. Pain is everywhere. About 75 million people in the USA live with chronic pain. Ouch! Number 45. There was a man. He was a hardy kind of fella, but in 1995 when he was at work on his construction site, a building site in his native England, something reduced him to howls and tears. He jumped right onto a long nail that went straight through his boot. The young man yelped in agony. He even kept screaming while the doctors filled his veins with the best opiates available to mankind. The pain he managed to get out was excruciating. After the drugs started to take effect, the doctors managed to see the damage. The nail went through the middle of the man's toes. There were zero injuries to his body. And that's not even the strangest case of pain on this list. Number 44. There's a scientific explanation for the man's case. Researchers have pointed out that, like in many other cases, the man's senses believed that that nail had gone through his foot. As one of them put it, thoughts, beliefs, and emotions, including panic and fear, set off a cascade of biological and neurochemical processes. His brain, synthesizing the sum total of this information, decided that he was in danger, so it made pain to protect him. He believed there was pain, so he felt pain. As weird as that might sound to you, as you'll see later in the show, maybe we can help ourselves when it comes to pain. This story is equally strange. Number 43. Surprisingly enough, we are returning to another construction site. This guy was using a rather powerful nail gun when it accidentally fired. He felt something in his face, but he didn't worry too much about it and just got on with the job. Life went on. Then, six days later, he was at the dentist. He still felt fine. The dentist, though, had some bad news for him. An x-ray showed there was a large nail in his head. The nail had dangerously hit his brain's cerebral cortex. Of course, he needed medical help after that. In this case, because the man's senses told him everything was okay, he ended up feeling no pain. Now for something a bit more ordinary, but it's something you ought to know. Number 42. Some of you would likely vote for having a pain-free life, but if you felt no pain, you'd be in trouble. You feel pain because the nerves in your body are telling your brain there is something wrong. You can then fix whatever is wrong. So pain, just like a good cop, is trying its best to keep you alive. Number 41. Only a few hundred folks in the world can't feel pain, and we can tell you that they wish things were different. Feeling no pain is a huge downer. Take the case of Stefan Betts, who when he was interviewed by the BBC back in 2017, was a 21-year-old university student in Germany. The BBC said this guy could put his hand in a bowl of boiling water and not feel a thing. Pain for him was totally absent from his life. He really hated the fact that this was his reality. Imagine being him during childhood, when he was always having accidents and he didn't even know he was injured. He broke a foot and didn't feel anything. One time he even bit off some of his tongue and only knew about it because of the blood. Number 40. Pain can have its positives, though. As a scientist named Dr. Brock Bastian discovered, he did a series of tests where he put people through pain. In groups, participants did things such as eat hot chili peppers and immerse their hands for a long time in ice water. They didn't know what this experiment was about, of course. What the doctor found out was that this control group and other pain groups later worked really well together on certain challenges, better than the groups who had not earlier suffered together. The pain, it seems, brought them together. Number 39. It's often said the worst insect sting comes from the bullet ant, called that because its sting feels like being shot. A well-known entomologist named Justin O. Schmidt actually developed a pain index of all pain-inducing critters, and he put the bullet ant in first place. This is what he said about the sting. It's like walking over flaming charcoal with a 3-inch nail embedded in your heel. It's also been described as causing waves of burning, throbbing, all-consuming pain that continues unabated for up to 24 hours. You might not believe it, but some people will willingly put themselves through pain. Number 38. The Sathare Mawe tribe of Brazil have an initiation ceremony for boys who are ready to become warriors. It involves putting your hands into a glove full of bullet ants and some sadist blowing smoke into the glove to enrage the ants. Some of the kids apparently shake for a day and can't use their hands at all. The pain must be unimaginable. 
they need to go through about 20 of these ceremonies before they're accepted as grown men capable of doing a bit of warrioring. Number 37. The stonefish is another baddie of the animal world that can make your day much worse. They look like a stone, as the name suggests, so they get stepped on from time to time. As that happens, the pain is immense, and it could be lethal if not treated with antivenom. A sting has been described as causing irregular heartbeat, temporary paralysis, shock, extreme pain, and possibly death. Stay away from stones on the beach, guys, but we really should be telling Australians more than most people. Number 36. You probably want to know what people say is the worst pain in the world. We won't tell you that just yet, but we will tell you that cluster headaches are up there. Here's how some people have described them. I will never forget the sheer and sudden agony which woke me up in the early hours of the morning. Someone jabbed a white-hot poker into your eye socket and is holding it there for 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Number 35. The brain doesn't actually feel pain. It's the nerves that send the signals back to the brain so the brain can react. Number 34. But also, the brain itself doesn't have nerves. It's surrounded by nerves, but there are none inside it. That's why a surgeon could wield a scalpel in there and the patient wouldn't feel any pain at all. Number 33. It seems women feel more pain than men in general. One scientist said, on average, women report the same stimuli to be more painful than men. He added, the burden of pain is substantially greater for women than men, and that led pain researchers like myself to wonder if the pain perception system is different in women than in men. But why? Number 32. That is the billion dollar question, because how can you actually measure pain? You can't, but you can measure people's response to it. Researchers don't really know why women seem to feel more pain. Some of them think it could be about hormones or perhaps a woman's increased susceptibility to things like depression and sadness. Now for something we all face, and most of you know about it. Number 31. Some of you know there are toothaches, and then there are toothaches. If you've ever had a severe toothache where the tooth gets infected, you'll know that it's one of the most horrible things in the world. You literally feel like pulling out your own tooth. Well, during lockdown, some people couldn't get to a dentist, so they decided to do the dentistry themselves. One man who successfully went through this process said, The pain was excruciating, but the main thing was the whole left-hand side of my face was swelling up. Every half hour it was getting bigger. I looked like the elephant man. With the help of his 12-year-old son and some household tools, they managed to get the tooth out in about an hour and a half. He said the relief was instantaneous, although such ad hoc dentistry is not advisable. Ok, some quick fire facts now. Number 30. 25 million Americans experience those terrible things called migraines. Number 29. One in every six Americans suffers from arthritis. Number 28. This is good news for companies that sell medications for pain relief. The global pain relief market is said to be around $50 billion. Number 27. You might have heard something about the opioid crisis in the USA. One of the main reasons that happened is because a company called Purdue managed to pass one of their drugs, OxyContin, as not being addictive. It was, and still is, and it's basically heroin good heroin. Number 26. Scientists, though, still don't understand pain very well. This is why it's hard to just stop someone's pain. As one expert said, pain is complex and defies our ability to establish a clear definition. Pain is far more than neural transmission and sensory transduction. Pain is a complex mixture of emotions, culture, experience, spirit, and sensation. Number 25. That's because a drug like Tylenol blocks an enzyme that produces a chemical compound called postglandins. These are things that cause inflammation and swelling. That's the theory, anyway. It's still up for debate. There's no buzz, so it's not as abused. That doesn't mean it's not dangerous. In some cases, it can cause liver damage, usually when it's taken over the amount prescribed or after a lot of daily use. In the US, there are about 500 deaths a year as a result of Tylenol and acetaminophen, as well as 56,000 visits to the ER. Number 24. Cancer is a terrible disease to have. But did you know that a lot of time it comes without any pain? Many people have gotten a diagnosis and soon after die. This is why. Number 23. The tumor itself doesn't have nerves. It's only when the nerves nearby get compressed by the tumor that the person might feel something. According to cancer experts, only 38% of those who suffer from cancer have moderate to severe pain. Number 22. It can be the same with liver disease. For instance, some people might eat badly or drink way too much booze, and their liver could start to scar, and the scarring could get so bad that the person gets end-stage liver disease. Once they've been told that, sometimes they don't have long left. But during all those years of scarring, even when the liver was like leather, they might not have felt any pain. That's why the liver is called the silent organ. You'd think we'd have been designed better, because in the vast majority of cases, the early scarring is completely reversible. Number 21. You might have wondered in your life if it hurts when you get shot. Well, it all depends on where you get shot. The pain can be mild enough, so some folks don't even know they've been hit. The pain can also be severe. 
Thankfully, we have some survivor statements. Here's what some of them said. I heard the gunshot and felt the tight pressure in my arm. I looked and saw the wound and how much blood I was losing and the next thing I know, I'm in the hospital. I was shot with an AK-47 to the leg. Felt like a baseball bat hit me but no pain. This was followed by a buzzing feeling for 5-10 to 10 seconds, then the severe achy pain set in. As you'll now see, drowning can be painful too, but not for everyone. Number 20. One person said about drowning, I actually realized that I was going to drown so I breathed the water in on purpose just to get it over with. It only hurt when I was coughing it up. Yet another person said after they let go and allowed the water in, my lungs had more or less given out and there was no pain, just comfort. Another person said when she swallowed the water it burnt like hell. So drowning seems to be a mixed bag. As you'll now see, sometimes it can take some time for pain to come. Number 19. In 2008, ABC News reported about a Utah photojournalist who'd been photographing a javelin event when he was hit in the leg. It went right through to the other side. He later said it wasn't really painful. Doctors told ABC that in many traumatic injuries, the person might not feel the immediate impact of the pain. Some of you might have a broken leg only to get right up, but then not long after collapse again when the pain finally kicks in. One of the doctors interviewed explained, when a severe injury happens, the body's adrenal glands secrete epinephrine, a hormone that then increases blood pressure and heart rate, which helps the person suffering the injury run away or stay alive. Again, your body is looking out for you. Number 18. As for the dreaded root canal, they don't hurt, even though they scare a lot of people. It's what comes before the root canal that hurts. Now for one of your biggest nightmares. Number 17. Can you imagine waking up in the middle of surgery? That shouldn't happen because if it looks like you're waking up a bit, you'll just be given extra sedation. But there is something called anesthesia awareness where the sedation doesn't work. Luckily, it's rare and it only happens to about one or two in a thousand people. Usually, the worst part of the awareness is seeing what's going on, which in some cases could lead to post-traumatic stress disorder. Still, worse things have happened. Number 16. This happened to a Canadian woman named Donna Penner when she woke up during her abdominal surgery. She told the BBC, I panicked, I thought this cannot be happening. So I waited for a few seconds, but then I felt him make the first incision. I don't have words to describe the pain. It was horrific. I could not open my eyes. The first thing that I tried to do was sit up, but I couldn't move. She said she could feel the surgeon moving something around in her organs, which, as you can imagine, caused her a lot of stress. She survived, and the surgeon later went on to her room and said there'd been some problems. She thought, no kidding, and I told him, I was awake, I felt you cutting me. She said his eyes filled with tears, and he said, I'm so sorry. We imagine you hated that story just as much as you liked it, but let's stick with the horror for now. Number 15. You've all seen those movies depicting old times when someone has a leg amputated, and of course there's no anesthetic. There's just the Hollywood trope of putting a stick in the mouth and a glug of whiskey. How real is that? Amputation goes back a long way to the famous Arab Andalusian surgeon and father of modern surgery, Al Zarawi. When he was around over a thousand years ago, he wrote, Sometimes the extremities become gangrenous. You must cut off that limb as far as the disease has spread so that the patient may escape death or a greater affliction, greater than the loss of the limb. Number 14. But people were having limbs amputated a long time before that. It's written that Queen Vishpla, a warrior queen mentioned in the Hindu ancient texts, was wounded in battle sometime around 1200 BC. She then had an iron prosthetic leg fitted. The question is, did it hurt? Number 13. Yes, it did, and a lot. Captain James Cook wrote in 1685 that a man on his ship had to have his leg amputated. Cook wrote, Dismembering is a dreadful operation yet necessary that the dead part may not injure the living nor procure death. He went on to describe the procedure, adding that the patient was given some alcohol before a knife was used to cut around the gangrene. The next step was using a saw to cut away the bone. This part had to be done perfectly and fast, so there would always be another saw on standby in case the first one broke. The British Medical Journal, where we found the story, said many early accounts state that speed was the only pain relief. It added, yet however fast the amputation, the devastating intensity of the agony remained. Number 12. Not surprisingly, people in those days would sometimes pass out during such an operation, something the doctors didn't want to happen because they thought alertness made the process more successful. The reason you faint when you experience sudden massive pain is because something called the vasovagal syncope triggers, and that leads to a sudden drop in blood pressure and heart rate. With less blood flow to the brain, you pass out. Number 11. A question you're all dying for us to answer is, is it possible to block out pain? Some of you might have seen a famous photograph of a Buddhist monk in the street on fire and it looks as though he's okay with it. In fact, someone who saw it remarked as he burned he never moved a muscle, never uttered a sound. His face seemed to remain fairly calm until it was so blackened by the flames that you couldn't make it out anymore. Could you do that? 
possibly when you have one of those terrible toothaches? Number 10. Probably not, because you can't reach a state of deep meditation. Some people have written that if you can get to such a stage, you might be able to suffer tremendous physical pain without flinching. Now for some good news. Number 9. Studies have shown that with the help of meditation, even if you're a novice, you can at least reduce pain. We know that because neuroscientists measured people's brains using imaging scans. One of those scientists concluded a little over an hour of meditation training can dramatically reduce both experience of pain and pain-related brain activation. This next one is just as amazing. Number 8. A Nobel Prize winning scientist named Daniel Kahneman was very interested in pain, so he conducted a pain experiment. He took a bunch of participants and asked them to put their hand in a bucket of icy water. One time the temperature was 14 degrees Celsius and the time in the water was 60 seconds. In the other trial, the water and the temperature were the same, but then he warmed the water to 15 degrees Celsius and added another 30 seconds. After being put through both trials, 70% of the people said they would prefer the second option, stating that it was way less painful. The reason they actually chose the worst trial is because people generally remember the last thing that's happened to them more clearly. Ok, now let's talk about execution. Number 7. There was a German executioner named Franz Schmidt who wrote a diary about his executions which were turned into a book. He executed 361 people until he retired in 1617. The form of killing was either hanging, beheading, or the worst being broken on the wheel. The least painful he said was beheading. He'd often give the person some alcohol, but not so much they couldn't stay straight for his acts. He'd also said that if the crowd really hated a person, a killer perhaps, when he broke them on the wheel, he'd start at the feet and work his way up. If the crowd wanted mercy, he'd start with the head. Number 6. Over in China, sometimes the condemned could bribe the executioners to ensure the process went smoothly. In that country, flaying was sometimes the form of execution, which was incredibly painful. In some cases, just the face would be flayed, which might not have killed someone immediately, but death was likely around the corner. There are a number of reasons for death in flaying, with one being shock and loss of blood, both of which might kill someone fairly fast. Even if they survive the initial punishment, they'd likely die soon enough from an infection or even hypothermia. We can't really imagine anything more brutal, although as you know, we've tried. Number 5. Now we need to talk about ghosts. There is something you might not have heard of called phantom pain. It can be seriously painful. The strange thing is, the pain is coming from a part of the body that isn't there. So a person might have lost an arm, but every day they feel excruciating pain where the arm was. In the past, doctors thought the pain was purely psychological, but now they believe phantom pain is the result of nervous system signals getting mixed up. Number 4. Let's now talk about pain relief through the ages. In the 1600s in Europe, the use of opium became very popular for pain management. In the 1800s, they discovered that chloroform was a good anesthetic. The ancient Greeks might have used certain herbs as well as opium for various kinds of pain, but we like something the ancient Egyptians used to do from time to time. That was to collect electric eels out of the Nile and lay them on people for the reason that the electric discharge could relieve pain from inflammation. The ancient Greek physician, the great Hippocrates, would sometimes use torpedo fish to relieve folks of their headache or gout. These fish are a kind of electric ray. The Roman physician Scribonius Largus also prescribed a few shocks with one of those fish to cure chronic headaches. So we have to ask, can pain actually feel good? Number 3. We know some of you enjoy pulling off scabs even though it hurts a little bit or perhaps some savages out there are partial to ripping your nasal hairs out. It can feel kind of nice in a bad way. Some scientists have said that when pain is not as bad as we expected it to be, we can actually enjoy the pain. But many people put themselves through pain all the time, whether it involves extreme exercise or someone whipping them across their leather-clad face. In these circumstances, we can produce our very own brand of narcotics, what scientists call endorphins, which not only block pain, but in some cases give us a post-pain rush similar to the high of morphine or heroin. But sometimes pain is some plain old pain, such as when it's the worst pain in the world. Number 2. It's called trigeminal neuralgia and is frequently called the worst pain humans can face. It's actually described as feeling like an electric shock going through the face that can last seconds or up to two minutes. These can come out of the blue and can happen to anyone. Although science is still trying to figure them out, it's almost certain they occur due to something called the trigeminal nerve. This is part of the nervous system that sends messages from the face to the brain. For some reason not yet fully understood, something goes wrong and pain happens. Intense pain, described by some sufferers as fireworks in your face or red-hot needles being poked in the face. One man said, I wanted to rip my head open to get out whatever was in there. It can ruin your life, as those who experience this frequently are unable to perform basic tasks such as eating or speaking. So with that in mind, as you sit comfortably in your chair watching this show, just take a second to realize that things aren't so bad. Number 1. Now we must ask, does a broken heart actually hurt? The answer is yes, it can. 
There is something called broken heart syndrome, and it can happen after a person's been through a lot of stress, sometimes emotional stress. This can cause the heart muscles to weaken, cause chest pain that could lead to heart failure. It's unlikely, but extreme mental pain could cause you a lot of physical pain. Now you need to watch 50 insane death row facts nobody tells you. Or have a look at this.